One thing's pretty cool about this truck, it's got the raised like cowl hood on it because of that supercharger. So it kind of gives you a little bit more of a beefy look as you look over the hood, which that's really neat. Pretty incredible how this is the last year they're gonna build these things. So at the end of the day, wonder how many Ram TRX trucks were built from 2020, if I'm correct. 2020 was the first year they brought these to the market. So what's a four year run? What would be your guess? Did they build 80,000 of these, 100,000 of these? I have no idea. I've never even looked at the numbers. Yeah, we can kind of get into this thing a little bit. You hear that nice, uh, you know, you hear the uh, supercharger, which is pretty cool. As the spring is kind of taking a little time out because uh, all that warm weather that we had here recently, the trees and the grass were all coming to life and now they kind of all have kind of slowed down because of the uh, cooler weather. Now, if you look here, this is what I'm talking about. This has like in one level, one level here. You look in here, but then it has a big, deep, deep, huge amount of storage. Look at that. It's just incredible of how much storage this truck has, not including the back. I mean, that's why I just talk about all the time is how this is a truck <laughs> and it gives you plenty of storage, which is really cool. That's my biggest challenge of all the years of working out of trucks is there's just a never enough storage. Uh, it's a never ending building. Does anybody here really um, pay attention to just all the building? I mean, sincerely, if you look at what's going on around your area, it just is it's mind boggling when I travel around and I see all of the construction. And yet, you know, you have people thinking that the country's slowing down or, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's befuddling because the home construction is still just where I go. And once again, this is in the D.C., Virginia, Maryland area, the Tennessee area, the Florida area. There's nothing showing anywhere where the, this massive amount of building is, is slowing down. I mean, I hear about it, but I don't see it. Not where I travel, so... Getting down the road. Now we're kind of out on the open highway. Getting a little bit more experience in the truck. And yeah, a comfortable truck, nice truck. And I kind of figured it'd be about 13 mile per gallon vehicle. If we're not really getting into it, I think it's probably a 13 mile per gallon vehicle. So it's not shabby. It's a fun truck though. It is, it is fun. That's for sure. To be out there that buys one you won't be disappointed and for me part of me is like yeah I probably would have never gone for the Raptor 37 this probably would have kept me content or wouldn't yeah this is such a really nice truck but the Raptor truck does have the uh, the more the better ride I and mean, I'm just the way it is even for me this is a fun truck. So if you're out there that loves a Ram T-Rex, I get it. I love the truck. It's a great truck. But the Dagon Ford Raptor just has a different personality in the suspension. And it's just a really fun truck as well. But this is just badass. With this exhaust note. When I get out of it and my working around, I just hearing that rumble. I mean, it's just so nice. So, and the thing is, I've said it many times. Boy, I tell you, to spend basically... 40 grand more, 30, 40, 50 grand more for a Raptor R, is it really worth it? I mean, if I'm probably smart, I'll just sit out the Raptor R market for, it'll take a few years. But those things will always be probably 100,000 plus dollar car trucks. So anyways, in the moment, you know, look here, see the suede, you know, uh, trimmed out interior, that's pretty cool. It's got the VIN number right there. There's another little Suede. So the uh, the way Ram takes these and really does do a good job of giving them a really 
high-end feel of all the uh, quality in the vehicle. It really does have a great quality feel. Now, there's a guy on a Tesla. So you think you ran out of energy? What do you think that person doing, right? I have no idea, but the, uh, you know, the, the truck really is just a really comfortable, nice truck, for sure. And once again, I think that the interior is above the uh, Ford product. And I really do like that rear view mirror having the camera capability and the adaptive cruise control. That's nice. And how much gas did it burn? About a quarter of a tank. So, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Fun, you know, it's incredible. If I didn't get rid of that red eye charger I had, wow, it'd be crazy. I'd right now have three uh, supercharged Hellcats. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that would be something, wouldn't it? Well, if I got a Trackhawk, interesting, the Trackhawk that makes more sense has had to go back to the Jeep dealership because of a check engine light. So another Trackhawk that I was thinking about maybe looking at. And then the black one, you know, it's a nice vehicle, but it's such high mileage. So, so many people, I mean, I get it. It's, I mean, it's, just, it's just too, it's too pricey. I think I think it's like 50 grand. I think 50 grand, it'd probably be more, make a little more sense, but to be in that mid to high 60s oof. and I just think they're going to start to populate so it's just all about patience that's the biggest challenge being patient right as I share with you my Ram TRX day as we go down the road oh I'm all over the way I'm everywhere man Jesus Christ I'm in some back roads I took the wrong turn but hey I'm going to get back in the right roads yeah I'm really getting a feel for this truck on these bumpity bumpity back roads and it handles it well but it's a lot of truck that's the thing like anybody here that drives a truck kind of gets that message and if you're used to driving a car suv not a big one but you'll just kind of be like taken back because this is so much truck and it's a powerful truck it really is look at that i'm just about getting 14 miles per gallon how about that huh I've been off, you know, I've been on the highway, off the highway, back roads, and I'm not really getting into it. I'm being tame with her, and I've left her in the auto mode. So, uh, she definitely doesn't have any rattles or shakes, so that's encouraging. What well, year are these houses built, right? So, at the 50s, 60s, and that's something. Boy, they built a house today. It's, yeah, it's all over the world, right? All right, whoa. So here, man, I tell you what, these pillars, these pillars are so big, man, these big-ass trucks. I mean, I've driven these trucks many years, and I'm going to tell you what, sometimes it's like, ooh, you don't see things because it's such that blocks your view. Oh, Yes. Wow, on the back roads, back roads, I've had 14 miles per gallon. How about that? I'm impressed. <laughs> you don't buy these trucks for fuel mileage, Ice Man. I hear ya. Oh, what just beautiful country up here where I live. It is really nice you can drive these back roads. Get off the main highways and all, it just really is just beautiful. Really nice. Truck's doing really well. I'm getting 14.4 miles per gallon. How about that? But I'm not, I'm not getting into the truck. I'm really just driving it regular. I'm not going slow, not going too fast. I'm just kind of driving it. And just to really see what I can get out of this thing if you're not too radical in it. Which that's not bad. I mean, sincerely. Now, um, I am tempted to do the launch. Do I do the launch? I don't even know what this thing's supposed to do. I have no idea. I really don't. I don't even know if the 060 time is this thing. 
Is that pitiful or what? Yeah, I know. I just kind of guess in some ways I just kind of pulled myself away from this truck because I just had a hell of a time getting a deal done on it. And it just is incredible how I finally did it. So I got 14.5 miles a gallon. I don't know. I'm debating whether I do a pull today or not. I may wait for another day for that. We had some good pulls yesterday. I mean, things definitely fast. I'm just kind of enjoying the truck the way it is. And uh, kind of maybe leave it at that. Because uh, just it really is. It really is a nice truck. I can't emphasize enough that this really is a nice package. And once again, then I'll start second-guessing myself why the hell I bought a Raptor 37, won't I? But, you know, the thing is, the Hellcat prices have gotten so... Uh, tamed down in so many ways I could go back and buy probably a red eye Hellcat for less than I paid for one a year and a half ago and probably get every bit as good a car if not better and have less debt <laughs> isn't that something I mean truthfully so oh the Ram CRX day the Sharon day the kid called me on the phone. She didn't know I took this today, but she heard, she could hear the motor and the, the exhaust, the background. She's like, hey, you're driving the Ram TRX, aren't you? I'm like, I sure am. They're getting all the farmers are getting everything in order for their planting. This is a lot of sod territory out here, so I think that's going to be sod. That's big business out here. A lot of little tree farms. Hard to believe it. You probably went 30 years from now, 50 years from now. I guarantee if you drove through here, this will all be housing and commercial. I sincerely doubt it would be rural land. The farmers will have their day and sell out. And anybody knows if you live in these metro politan areas, metropolis to be able to drive down the road and not have a car in front of me, a car behind me, that's just incredible it really is I wonder if the number one thing people are going to hear in this video, I think they're going to hear the tires that would be my guess Coming into the railroad town. Look at this. Ah, do I hit 15? Do I hit 15 miles per gallon? I tell you what. If I have to drive around a little bit longer, I think it's possible. Yes. I wonder who out there has hit 15 miles per gallon with the Ram TRX. I'm sure somebody has. Yeah, this is the good old railroad station. And for so many years, the government workers have used, and I talk about it every time I come through. It's all thinned out because most people are sitting at home working now. Look at that parking lot. Empty. Empty. So that parking lot is probably a third of what it used to be. The train probably carries a third to half of the people it used to carry. That'd be my guess. Got a light up here. If we didn't have a light, I bet you we'd get close to 15. What do you think? I don't know. Got a little bit of hillage coming up, so I'm not so sure we'll, we may go down on economy versus up. A few things I gotta look into. Does this have the hill, does this have the hold? capability where the car I mean my Grand Wagoneer has that if I remember right so I bet there's some settings in here where the other person never used them and then does this have the automatic brake when you put the car in park does the e-brake automatically set itself I swear my former Ram truck had that so when you get home if I can remember I can look at the settings I bet there's settings in this truck that nobody has used even know about it 
nice and tame. I mean, these Hellcat motors are really nice motors. I mean, I've had so many, it's hard to believe how many Hellcat motors I've owned now. <laughs> Just thinking out loud, I'm going to say a Plum Crazy Challenger 1, a Red Charger 2, and then a Octane Red Wide Body Challenger 3, a White Charger Narrow Body 4, and then a Gold Rush Challenger 5, then a Frostbite Blue Charger 6, so this is number 7. That was always my favorite number was seven. So I've had seven Hellcat engines since 2000, the fall of 2015. So that would be from 2015, so nine years, a little over eight years. And I'm trying to keep this thing within reason. I'm just trying to, I don't think I'll hit 15 because I got a lot of uphills coming up here. If I had flat and some downhill, I think I'd probably hit 15 miles per gallon, which I think that'd be so cool. Then they would treat, intrigue me to know what the guys in the Raptors are getting because the Hellcat engine to me was much more fuel efficient than that Predator motor in my GT500. So since I had the GT500 and the Hellcats, the GT500s were just gas guzzlers. I never got really a good fuel economy out of them. But the Hellcats, if you don't get into them, you can get like 20 miles per gallon or more. That GT500, I never saw that type of number. Up here we are. So that, that place is for sale. That place could never make it. So I would think that the Ram truck would beat in fuel economy the Raptor R. But the Raptor R has more power. So there's a whole other variable. And is Raptor R a 770 or a 760? And is this like, is this like 700 or something like that? I don't even know. I'll have to look it all up. I just, eh, I'm telling you, I just this happened on a, this happened on a whim, by a fluke. So I'm still 14.7. So let's see how it plays out. Hey, how about that? 14.8. Oh, I think it'd be so cool if I got this thing to 14, to 15. I got this thing to 15 miles. You know, it's funny here to me is I sure he was watching his channel be like, so this guy is fixed, fixated on getting fuel mileage out of his Ram TRX. <laughs> Where the next guy be like, I'm going to go put that thing pedal to the metal and see how fast I can get to, to 60 miles an hour, how fast I can get to a quarter mile. And this guy here is fixated on a, what his fuel economy be done at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, it's the truth, isn't it? Yeah, right. Yeah. I just don't have the, uh, I'm just not excited about doing much of this truck today. I, I wanna save it for another video. I just did not into, oh, yesterday we are out, running it. I mean, I've been running non-stop, man. So my 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 energy level is probably about the same as this fuel economy. But it went back to 14 point. So 14.8 was the best I could get it today. I'll let the wife, if I let the, the wife drive it, she'll get 20 miles a gallon. I don't know how my wife does it. My wife gets in some of my vehicles and she gets these magical fuel mileage. I don't know how she does it. I'm sincere. Oh, we're coming into the home stretch back to the ice age tv compound and i definitely want to look at the uh settings and see if uh, i can figure out how to actual e-brake on this and a hold feature i would think there is as we get closer to home and i think we did about a, a little over a 100 mile day today that's my guess i'll have to look at my mileage when i started so here we are. East Age TV, bringing her home, bringing it home. Hey, is anybody home? Is anybody home? As the birds crap all over my damn cars. Oh my gosh. So challenging. It is challenging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend a little time looking at the, the uh, settings 
it'll come back to you. Okay, so when I go to put this car in uh, park, the parking brake doesn't automatically activate, which just, I have no idea why I have these e-brake, you know, it's no more mechanical, it's electric. So you gotta pull manually for the brake to come on. But if I have my seat belt on, and I put this in drive, this automatically releases the, the e-brake. If I don't have my seatbelt on, it won't. So there's gotta be a setting in here to change that. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. So I went into settings. You go back here, look here. You go into brakes. I'm into brakes here. Auto brake. So look at here. So now, that should make it now. When I start the car up, and I put it in park, it'll come on. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. Now, what about um, hold, hold hill thing? Hill start assist, what's that? Hill start assist. Um, what do we got here? Lane sense, medium. Let's see, forward collision. Warning, medium, okay. Got that. Blind spot alert, hill start. What's the tire fill assist? Huh, interesting. So, I wonder where the other thing is there. I'm surprised that it doesn't have that. I'm about to go somewhere else. All right. I don't. Uh, I don't see the uh, hold the vehicle. So let's start up the car. So let's see how this plays out. So I don't have my seatbelt on. So I have to manually do that. So I just put the brake. I took it off manually. But now. I'm gonna put the car in park. So look at that, there you go. Which I like that. Why Ford can't do the same, same damn thing? I don't understand. Okay, there it is. That's a wrap for the Ram Chair X. First driving impressions more than just taking a test drive. Love the truck, I really do like the truck. So in hindsight, had I known I was gonna be getting this truck, but I've gotten my Raptor 37. I don't know. I mean, the Raptors, the Raptors are such a nice truck. I mean, they really are. So, in this year, I guess if somebody came to me and said, okay, I'm going to buy a Raptor truck new where I can find a nice used Ram Chair X, I would honestly say I would buy the nice used Ram Chair X because you just can't beat that V8 fun. You can't beat it. And so, for the record, I paid 80 grand. For this um, 37 Raptor. <laughs> you kind of think it through. It's like, but you got a Ram TRX for 80 grand that has so much more of the fun factor for the power. But at the same time, these are very fun trucks. So, and if it's all about pedal to metal, you're going to want the V8. And in so many ways, the V8 wins. It's a lot of fun. It's a cool, a cool truck. And there's not as many. TRX is out there as there are Raptors, so I have to tell somebody. But then when it came to the Raptor R versus the Ram, brand new, I would guy I would go for the Raptor R because the Raptor R to me has more power and a more fun factor. I think it has a better suspension, better ride, more power. And here's the thing: the brand new Ram TRX is now a buck twenty. Yeah, it's anywhere from a buck. Uh, 14 to buck 24 to buck 30 plus. So if you can buy a Raptor R for within reason, which they are, they're going to be about the same price, a buck 11, buck 20, I would all day long buy the Raptor R. But then you step back and say, I've got a budget of 80 grand, I'd be buying this all day long because you're not going to be able to pick up a Raptor R 80 grand for a long time. <laughs> That's probably a good two, three years away at least. And so that's it. I hope that helps anybody out there that's got a budget in mind. And I would absolutely recommend the Ram Chair X for 80 grand over a regular Raptor non V8 setup. That's that's what I'd buy. I would buy this. So there you go. It's the Ram Chair X driving experience. I'm blessed to be able to have these type of vehicles. And for me, when you drive this race truck, this is such a Fun truck it is such it is so much lighter nimble you get into this this is a lot of material I mean this is a lot of truck and so for me 
I like it, but I think it could it'd wear you out if you drove it all the time. This is really, to me, more of a toy. So anybody out there that's thinking this is their primary truck, I don't think I would do that. I, I mean, you know, but whatever. Go have fun. Whatever. I'm not here to tell you how you live your life, but I'm just sharing my own experiences. And, uh, and you just saw how I got close to 15 miles per gallon if you're not just running. You just aren't a uh, heavy metal, heavy pedal guy. So, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Stay tuned for the morning conversations. What are we talking about tomorrow? Today, we talked about sharing. That was my morning conversations. So, for anybody there that's watching my channel, every morning, Monday through Friday, I share uh, my day, uh, my ideas and views. And I take cars and trucks and motorcycles and SUVs, and I use those as an example of where we are in today's society. I really do. I mean, I now have sacrificed my really nice cars for the motorcycles, but that's not permanent. I'm just gonna get these bikes out, make sure they're all running, get a few of them fixed, and then uh, you know put some air in the tires and ride them. And then I'll kind of shuffle them all around, put them back in the trailer, then get my nice Camaro Z28 back in here and the Corvette and uh, as the birds move in. So thanks again for watching my channel. Share the channel, please, please. Share the channel, subscribe, share. And I think I have some good stuff to bring to you. So uh, there you go. God bless. Have a great day. Stay tuned for more adventures.